In 2015, Cape Town was ravaged by wildfires that swept across our mountains. At Baboon Matters Trust, we were swamped by queries about the baboons. Were they okay? How had they been affected? What would happen to them after the fires? We know that when uncontrolled fires happen, wildlife is affected and often slower moving animals are burnt. But there are seldom cases of baboons being burnt in fires. In 2000 and 2008, in fires of a similar magnitude, only one baboon, already injured, was badly burnt and had to be euthanized. By comparison, on the 5th of March 2015, nine baboons were found either dead or with such severe burns they had to be euthanized. And by the 24th of March, the official death toll amongst Tokai baboons had risen to 13. So what was the significant factor in the 2015 fires that resulted in such high mortality of baboons? This is a record of our attempts to establish what happened. Our regular efforts to assist during the fire and to establish the well-being of the troops after the fire were continually thwarted by the authorities who would not allow Baboon Matters Trust onto their land. I explained my concerns about the baboons to the Chrysalis Academy and they granted me permission to try and see the baboons on their land and see what was going on. Within a very short distance from the Chrysalis sports field, I could already smell a dead body and soon discovered the charred remains of a young male baboon. I smelt more dead bodies, but the service provider arrived and I was denied access to check any further. The question is why did the baboons choose to remain at the perilous sleep site rather than to move to safety a few minutes away from the fires? One theory is that the baboons were curious about the fire. We consulted with six international primatologists and rehabilitation facilities who unanimously concluded that this was highly unlikely and irregular. Another theory is that the canopy fire moved so quickly across the top of the trees that the baboons were caught unawares. Again unlikely as the baboons would have been on high alert and there was a great deal of human activity on the mountain throughout the night. It is suggested that human wildlife solutions interfered with the baboons' natural instinctive behaviour by herding them with paintball guns during the fires. <coughs> In our view, this was completely unnecessary as historically baboons have always moved away from fires. It's been exceptionally difficult to get clear answers from anyone. All we do know is that an unprecedented number of baboons, at least 13 that we know of, died as a direct result of the fire. Perhaps of more concern, however, is what next? In a recent report from Human Wildlife Solutions, concerns were expressed about the dry autumn and the sparse food. Although there have now been some rains and some regrowth is starting on the mountains, it's clear that a full assessment of baboon management needs to be undertaken. After three months of intensive investigation, I'm left with more questions than answers. Why did 13 baboons die in these fires? The only significant difference between this fire and others in Cape Town has been the aggressive management of baboons prior to and during the fire. We therefore call upon the Western Cape government to review management strategies to encompass human management as well as less aggressive baboon management and we call upon Cape Tonians to support our efforts to ensure a future for all of the baboons on the Cape.